Let me give you a brief introduction. Etienne, can you go to the next slide? So just a, a brief introduction to recirculating aquaculture systems in general. Um, I wasn't sure how the, how, into how much detail the previous presenters would go into, into the technical detail. And I think maybe before I start, I'm gonna use an African analogy uh, for explaining the, the industry that, uh, that I'm in. Um, it's a bit like a lion trying to pin down and kill a zebra um, in a herd. You've got all of these black and white lines, um, all this technical detail that confuses your decision-making process. And it becomes very difficult to, to make an informed decision about whether you need to buy something or not with um, all this technical information that's coming. And I've seen a lot of the questions, you know, um, is it a temperature profile? Can we uh, control the temperature? What sort of stocking densities do we need? this type of filter, do we need that type of filter? And that's where those confusing lines come, come to the fore. So I'm gonna try and be as simple, um, I'm gonna try and present uh, things as simply as possible um, and really leave it up to the end user, that's the farmer or the investor to, to make the decision. So just some intro introduction, basic introduction to controls or recirculating aquaculture systems. You've got your grow out tank where you're holding your fish. They, um, you, they, you feed them, they excrete a waste product. You need to install a, a mechanical filtration system that takes out the, the particulate matter first. And then um, the waste material that goes through the particulate matter or through the, 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 the mechanical filter is removed by a biofiltration process. So your ammonia is removed. Then you need to add um, gas and remove the, re uh, remove the carbon dioxide and add um, oxygen and then clean up the water before it, sterilize it if you can, before it goes back into the holding tank again. So in very simple terms, that's your recirculating aquaculture system. And there's a whole lot of technical detail that, that one can go into around that, that very simple process. But this is just a, a broad overview um, to, to introduce the process. Next slide, please, Etienne. This really is a, a, a bit more technical detail around that same concept. You've got your holding tank with the fish in it that you're throwing food into. You've got a mechanical filtration process. Here it's a swirl separator or a radial flow settler. There's a mechanical uh, filter, microscreen filter, commonly called a drum filter. You've got your pump sump, and then you can pump into a fluidized sand, sand biofilter. There's also moving bed biofilter media. There's a whole lot of a range of different uh, technical solutions that you can that you can throw at this process. The water then goes into a, a CO2 stripper. It's got and an LHO, which is called a low head oxygenator, where we're adding oxygen before the water then goes back into the tank. So, a pictorial um, overview of a recirculating aquaculture system. Then I just want to go on to the next slide, where I'm just it will give you an introduction as to hopefully the video plays. It'll give you an introduction as to to what we're doing in, uh, in East London. This is our commercial uh, system that we're uh, busy building. And this is, um, comes after about 10 years of proof of concept uh, trials that we've been busy with at the same facility. So a lot of money has been spent on proving the business fundamentals of this uh, production process. And those business fundamentals um, basically boil down to your fish growth rate, your fish stocking density, um, your food conversion ratio, and a big one is the market price. What can you sell your, your product uh, for that justifies that level of investment? So here we have the drum filters, which is your mechanical filter. In the background, you have your um, biofiltration system. The water then gets pumped from the sump of that biofiltration system into the tanks. And um, the fish are held in those tanks, fed in those tanks, the wastewater then flows out of those tanks and back into the system again. And we've been doing, conducting our trials on a one-tenth scale of this system. And um, we've been having, you know, we've got very good results and uh, that has justified the expansion or the investment into the expansion of that production facility into a commercial scale. So Kingfish Enterprises, um, plans to produce around about 300 tons of yellowtail kingfish and dusky cob uh, to sell onto the local market in South Africa. 
And that at this point in time is the, the limit of the project. I think um, if we can go into the next slide, Etienne. This is the species that we, one of the species that we're farming, it's a yellowtail kingfish, um, scientific name, Seriola lalandi. It's uh, an indigenous species to South Africa. Um, the, the fishery is uh, very intermittent. At certain times of the year, you can get very good, good catches of the species that uh, is supplied onto the local market. And um, it does have a, a negative impact on price. It's a price volume, um, a volume um, yeah, um, demand factor. The, 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 the more volume there is coming into the market, the, the lower the price. But by um, installing a production year round, we can produce a high quality product that can supply consistent volumes of this product onto the local market and hopefully target what we're intending to target the high value restaurants where we can get a high, high uh, maximum return for um, our investment um, into farming the species. And the other species that we're farming is dusky cob. And we're also aiming to, to um, um, target that high value uh, market. Okay, Etienne, you can go on to the next slide. So can RAS farming work in Africa? Again, um, let's go on to the next slide and we, and we can we can see this is Um, I just wanted to, to point out the similarity between those two videos. Um, what you're seeing is excellent feeding response from both species. The first video you saw was on a catfish farm. And the second video you saw was on the Kingfish Enterprises farm, where we've been running our pilot scale commercial facility for now close on 10 years, proving the economic viability. So you're seeing a similarity in feeding response between those two species, but there's one big difference, and that's the price, your market price. For catfish, I mean, I'm uh, not a catfish farmer, but uh, from the reading that I've done, you're looking at a market price of around about $2 a kilo or less. That's farm gate for a, uh, a fresh catfish in the round. Now, if you go on to yellowtail kingfish, which is the next slide, Etienne, you're looking at a price of at least $6.50 a kilo if you enter, if you're able to, to enter that high value sashimi trade market that is there um, both locally and internationally uh, for yellowtail kingfish. And that really is the difference between the, the whether the sort of circulating aquaculture system can justify the investment or not. Can you get that? Are you getting the value out of your species to make it economically viable? And that is the bottom line. So Etienne, if you can go into the next slide. It's a very simple sum. Your sales income minus your capital cost minus your operating cost must be greater than or e greater than zero. Obviously you want to make a profit, but that is your bottom line. Now there's a lot of black and white stripes that uh, fuzz this whole um, equation. And there's a whole range of technology that can be applied in different environments to different species to solve different problems in different countries. And each, each application needs to be assessed in terms of this very simple sum. 
And if you are concerned and you need to, to, to do it, um, you know, you're, not con you're concerned whether it can actually be achieved or not, you need to start with a proof of concept facility. So try it at a small scale. Um, prove the economic viability, the growth rate of the fish, the stocking density of the fish in that system, the food conversion ratio of that, of that fish in the system and the market price that you're going to get for that, for that fish. Prove it on a small scale and then do the sums. Scale it up and see if, this, if expanding the facility to a commercial scale can make it economically viable. And, and there you need to be the lion. You need to be able to assess the situation. Is it worthwhile investing in this, in this kill or isn't it? And walk away if it's too risky and go for it if, if it's worthwhile. And that's the bottom line.